in Gabon and begins today. من الشباب وكذلك وفرة في الموارد الطبيعية وإمكانات اقتصادية هائلة على الرغم من President of the Gabonese Republic, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, allow me to convey to Your Excellency the warm and fraternal regards of Your brother, His Excellency, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, President of the Arab Republic of Egypt, and to extend Egypt's appreciation to the government and people of Gabon for hosting this African Climate Week. As a timely and beneficial platform for addressing Africa's needs and challenges at this time of climate crisis. Excellencies, Africa is undoubtedly the continent of promising opportunities with its youthful demographics, abundant natural resources, and promising economic potential. Yet, and despite contributing less than 4% of global emissions, we are now confronted with the impacts of climate change that are already curtailing our efforts for sustainable growth and testing the resilience of our communities. These impacts have left almost no region in Africa unaffected as they continue to occur at a high pace and with increasing intensity in the Horn of Africa, the Sahel region, Southern Africa, and along the coasts of the Mediterranean, making the continent one of the most devastated by the impacts of climate change, according to the latest IPCC reports. More so, Africa is obliged, with its already limited financial means and scant level of support, to spend around 2 to 3 percent of its GDP per annum to adapt to these impacts, a disproportionate responsibility that cannot be described as anything other than climate injustice. With this in mind, African governments and all other African voices, be them civil society, youth, women's groups, farmers, workers, academia, and the thriving African private sector, should all continue to call for climate justice, based on equity and the availability of means of implementation and guided by the principles of common but differentiated responsibilities and respective cap capabilities. Excellency, this year the world is facing multiple cascading challenges emanating from the tense global geopolitical landscape, food and energy security crisis, in addition to the increased cost of finance and the debt challenge compounded by impacts of climate change, with developing countries, in particular in Africa, having to deal with these consequences while facing their existing vulnerabilities and developmental challenges. As incoming presidency, we are cognizant of the effects of these challenges on the global push against climate change. And we continue to analyze this evolving situation and its potential impacts, together with assessing the implementation of previous pledges and the delivery on pledges and commitments from Paris all the way to Glasgow. Allow me to share with you our assessment of where we stand now in the overall picture. Science clearly indicates that the international community is lagging, lagging behind in mitigation, adaptation, and finance. Several pledges on mitigation, adaptation, and finance celebrated in Glasgow are yet to be delivered. The slowing down in the transition to renewables and even backtracking on commitments by many developed countries is a matter of concern for many of us. The delayed delivery of climate finance, be it doubling adaptation finance or fulfilling the annual 100 billion US dollar goal, continues to affect Africa's efforts to contribute to the global effort against climate change. Furthermore, actions and mechanisms to deal with the challenges related to loss and damage are not yet materializing. Of more relevance, the climate finance gap faced by Africa, especially with regards to adaptation finance, continues to persist. According to the World Resources Institute, the implementation of NDCs of African countries cumulatively require more than 331 billion US dollars through 2030, with an estimated 20% coming from national budgets. Having said that, it is only fair to also point to some positive developments, mainly on longer-term targets for renewable energy by Germany and others, the recently adopted U.S. domestic climate package, 
the commitment by many, in particular in Africa, to revisit and review their NDCs, and the positive message from financial institutions and the private sector to deliver pathways to carbon neutrality. COP27 is around the corner, and its message is loud and clear. There is no extra time, no plan B, and there should also be no backsliding or backtracking on commitments and pledges. Hence, timely, robust, effective, and at scale implementation needs to happen now to offset this clear danger and to save lives and livelihoods. COP27 is where this should start to happen. Excellency, as incoming presidency, we will continue to urge all parties, including in Africa, to update their NDCs and to show more ambition moving forward. We will also push for a transformative adaptation agenda guided by an ambitious global goal on adaptation. And we will spare no effort to assist parties in engaging in a frank, constructive, dynamic dialogue that addresses loss and damage, including the central issue of new and additional finance dedicated thereto. In conclusion, I am pleased to invite you to the two signature events hosted by the COP27 Presidency during Africa Climate Week, today at 5 p.m., and what does COP27 mean for Africa, and tomorrow at 9.15 on African Pathways to Just Energy Transition. The two events will allow us an additional opportunity to enrich our vision.